Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all in the house of the Lord this morning. I just feel a little different this morning. I don't know. Is it just me or is there just a little bit of excitement in the house of the Lord this morning? You know, there's always a time to be excited. We should be excited about coming into God's house because we're coming to have an encounter with him. So we should be excited about coming into his house. This morning, I want to start off. Um, I had, I'm multitasking today. So I wanted to start off with a scripture from Psalm 37, verse 23. One scripture, one scripture, but I have a little extra to add to it. So in Psalm 37, verse 23, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Well, who is that? That's us. He directs our steps. He delights in every detail of their lives. So what does that mean? That God delights in every single detail of our lives. And when I started looking up, I don't know, this week, especially for me, I, th I got to thinking about divine appointments and how the Lord puts us in places. If we listen to him, he will direct our steps and he'll put us in places for what? For us to be able to have an encounter with someone else who needs a word of encouragement or just needs a prayer or whatever. And I wanted to use this. It says, God orders, arranges, and establishes our lives. In Acts 8, 26 through 39, it says, Philip, the eunuch, which led, was an encounter. God used Philip and the eunuch. He drawed him away from the crowds and stuff, and he used Philip to meet the eunuch, to get up in the uh, cart with him and to explain the scriptures to him, which actually led for uh, the eunuch to be water baptized. Another one, it says God will also use difficult situations in our lives. Anybody had any difficult situations in their lives this week? Well, you know what? There's two times to praise God, and that's when we feel like it and when we don't. <laughs> And when we don't, that's when it's called the sacrifice of praise, okay? So, but he uses difficult situations in our lives to get the gospel to others. And if you don't believe me, if you look in Acts 16, verse 25 through 34, it says, Paul's trip to Philippi landed him in prison. But it also led him to be used to bring salvation to the Philippian jailer and his household. So, you know, most of us, including me, I'd be like, really, God, I'm doing all this stuff for you, and here I am up in jail, you know? <laughs> Wouldn't we be that way? But Paul began to praise the Lord in the midnight hour. And you know what? We all may have a midnight hour, but God brings us out on the other side where we have a chance to minister to other people. And I'm just going to share a couple things for this week that we were actually invited yesterday um, to a... It was a big fly-in that they had, and there was a young lady there. And if I hadn't went through this my own self, I couldn't really testify about it. But, you know, every single one of us has situations in our family where sometimes everybody don't get along. That didn't happen to you. Okay, maybe it just happens to me and my family, okay? But there was a situation where maybe me and one of my siblings wasn't really getting along. And even though I didn't feel like I was at fault, maybe I was. And if, even if I wasn't, by holding things, like maybe just feeling like I wasn't able to say I could be the bigger person. And God kept, whether it was through movies or different things, God kept saying, you need to call and talk to this person and tell them, ask them for forgiveness. Because, you know, the Bible says if, we ha if someone has ought against us, we're supposed to go to that person and make it right before we bring our offering to the Lord. We can't ask him to forgive us for anything unless we have a chance to ask for other people to forgive us and make things right. And you know what? It frees us, even if they don't accept it. Well, I had a chance to do that. I said, God, today I'm going to do it. Well, the first time I tried to call the person, the phone was busy. And I was like, okay, maybe God didn't say that. <laughs> so, you know you're all guilty of the same, you know. Maybe that wasn't the Lord at all, you know. <laughs> but then I tried again, and, it, and I just... I prayed about it while I was waiting, you know, and the Lord just opened up healing. So while I was at this gathering last night, 
there was a young lady there and something had just kind of happened in their family. And so I said, well, let me just tell you about this situation. And so sometimes things can kind of get mixed up in a text message. We can think that people have an attitude when maybe they really don't. They might be just busy, you know. And so I said, call the person and tell them. Ask them for forgiveness because then it frees you. So divine appointments, still, the Lord will use us to go through difficult situations and times because he wants us to have an encounter with somebody else. And then yesterday morning, I had a chance to minister to someone. Um, also, a young lady that I got to encourage her had an encounter at Kroger where I got to pray with someone in the um, right in the middle of Kroger that was just going through a difficult time. You never know if we will just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit He will put us in places that we need to be for those divine appointments, just like he did Paul and just like how he used Philip for those encounters. So this week, you may have situations where maybe you are holding a grudge against someone or maybe you don't feel like you've done anything wrong. Well, if you could humble yourself and ask for forgiveness and it would bring restoration to your family, wouldn't it be worth it? It would be worth it. And we all need times of restoration, especially in these darkened days. So I know it brought restoration to my family. And I know that God, if he can do it for me, he can definitely do it for you too. So as we open up this service this morning, this week, listen, be sensitive to God's spirit as he speaks to you, because you know what? He will give you those divine encounters if you will be sensitive to him. So we're gonna open up the service in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for divine appointments this week. God, to be able to touch other people's lives. Lord, to speak a word of healing. God, a prayer, a a word of restoration to someone, God. Lord, I pray today, God, as we go about our day and as we go about this week, and Lord, as we even encounter you in this service today, Lord, that you will heal, that you'll set free, and that you'll deliver. God, we thank you for these moments, and we just give you praise and glory and honor for it all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Y'all worship this morning.
everything you hold in your hand still you make time for me I can't understand praise God and the work that's got a beautiful your unfailing love unfailing love when you never change God you remain the holy one
I was trying to blame all my ills on this world I was in. Surface relationships used me till I was done in. And all the while someone was begging to free me from sin. He was there us for or forsakes us in the good times and the bad times he's there in the rough times hard times I don't know if you ever go through those but you will but he's there all the time the 13th of November everybody listening 13th of November on Sunday morning we're having a baptism a water baptism the 13th of November on Sunday morning and all those who are wanting to be baptized, it's on that Sunday morning. And uh, we're going to have a celebration. So please remember that. In the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. Romans 5, verse 1 through 9. You got your Bibles? Would you stand with me, please? Romans chapter 5, if you can. You don't have to if you don't want to. Therefore, being justified by faith... We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but, but we glory in tribulations. We glory in tribulations. We glory in tribulations. My goodness. Also knowing that tribulation work in patience. And patience, experience. There's something, there's something to be said about experience. There's something to be said about, I've been there, I've done that, I've seen that, I know what God will do. And patience, experience, and experience hope. Man, there's something to be said about hope. If you don't have hope, my goodness. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts and by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely, listen, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yea, preadventure, for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Verse 9. Much more than being now justified by, the, by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Praise God for the word of the Lord. I want to talk about this morning. Obedience is what will bring us peace, blessings, joy, contentment. It's, there's something to be said about having contentment. There's something to be said about having peace with our, our, with our God and with our fellow man. Something to be said about having peace. And peace with yourself also. Would you bow your head and pray? Father, thank you for all that you do, Lord. I praise you, God, because you are my king and my Lord and my master. And you're the Lord of this church. And these are your children. Bless them, God. Touch them, Father. Minister to them, Holy Spirit. Those who are watching my television and my social media, I pray, God, that you will touch them today, Father. Let something be said here. God, let me hide behind Christ. Let Jesus be seen and heard this morning, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can we give God a hand of praise? <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. What, what does God require of all of us? More than anything else. I think God requires of us to be obedient. Amen. To be obedient to salvation. To be obedient to discipleship. To be obedient in serving God. To be obedient in every area of our lives to Him. Everything you give to Him in order to be your best. Not leftovers, not second place, but your best. Not something you're going to throw away, but your best. God is Lord of all. And I'm going to tell you who He is. He's your creator. He's your maker. He's your keeper. He's your teacher. He's your guide. If these teeth come falling out there, I'm going to just pick them up and keep on preaching because <laughs> them bottom ones are shifting and twisting and turning. Boy, woo! Stick, glue, stick. Hello. My wife said, you need to wear them things and talk in them a lot where you can get used to them. Thank you. Thank you. Teeth made me look handsome. Oh, wow. Woo! You about that right. We took, a picture, we took a picture of me and my wife in front of the church two weeks ago on Pastor Appreciation Day. And one of my members from a former church said, well, where's Brother Hardeman at? Sister Harmon said, right there behind me. She said, well, he just lost so much weight. That wasn't what she was talking about. <laughs> He's my Lord. He's my master. He's my soon coming king. I've got to please him and nobody else. I've got to please him more than anybody else. I've got to please God. The importance of obedience in Isaiah chapter 1 Verse 16, the Bible says, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, cease to do evil. 
know what repentance is? Repentance is turning around and going the other way. Repentance is, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry that I've sinned and failed you. I can't save myself. But I'll be Jesus died for me and God raised him from the dead and I accepted him as my Savior. And then you turn and start going. The things you used to love, you don't love them anymore. The things you used to want to do, you don't want to do them anymore. The way you used to act, you don't want to act that way no more. The way you used to talk, you don't talk that way anymore. You love the things you used to hate. You hate the things you used to love. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fathers. Plead for the widows. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Listen now. If you be willing and obedient, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Obedience brings blessings. There's blockades to blessings sometimes when we don't live like we're supposed to live. There's blockades to blessings whenever we're not prayed up and praying and seeking God and studying His Word. There's blockades to blessings. I'll tell you what will open up the windows of heaven. He said, bring your tithes and offerings in. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven for you. I'll bless you. You know what he was saying? He said, be obedient to what I've told you in my word. Be obedient to the word of God. When we're obedient to the word of God, we put ourselves in a position for the blessings of the Lord. I remember one lady years ago, I wasn't even saved, but I went with my mother and my stepfather uh, to the Pendleton Church of God. Y'all sung there, hadn't you? The waters. Y'all know the waters and all of them? I know you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. A lady got up about 90-something years old. Everybody's heard this before. Here's what she said. She said, I want to be on the spout where the glory comes out. I want to be on the spout where the glory comes out. You know how to get on the spout? Obey God. Obedience. Do what God said. Act like God told you to act. Live like God told you to live. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God in the salvation. Amen. Don't be ashamed of God. Don't be ashamed of your Christian. Serve God before everybody. Live with God before everybody. Live, him, live with him when it's good times and in the bad times. Serve the Lord. Pray for you. You've been on my mind this week. Praying for you. Is it twins? Triplets? One. Praise the Lord. Woo! Now, I wasn't prophesying that. I'm just asking. <laughs> Obedience is the measuring stick for God's will and plan in your life. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Boy, I've used that scripture so many times. Obedience, okay. 1 John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world. Amen. I don't want to love this old world. I see where it's headed. There, there's no eternity in this world. There's no hope in this world. Paul said, if I have hope only in this life, I'm all miserable. I'm all men most miserable. He said, love not the world, neither the things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that obeys God, he that doeth the, the, uh, doeth the will of God, abideth forever. If you want to have eternity with God, obey him. Yes. He told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. We've got to obey, we've got to obey him in repenting and coming to God. We've got to get the, the horse in front of the cart. You've got to get saved first. Amen. Can you just lift your hands and praise Him? God is so good. If we love God, really love God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Anybody in love with God here? When you love Him with everything inside of you, and you get around people that don't know Him, 
You know what you're going to do? You're going to start talking to them about it. You're going to start in, in, because you want the, you love them, you love God, and you want them to have what we have the answer. Amen. We've got the answer to the world's problem. We've got the answer to sin. We've got the answer to, to uh, deception. We've got the answer to bondage. We've got the answer to sick. He takes care of all that. He takes care of all that. He loves you. Amen. Obedience. Somebody said in Sunday school, we're not obeying God in everything. We fail God in areas. Let's make, you know what? If everybody in this church, starting with me, starting right here, the spiritual leader, because I'm going to have to give an account to the way I pastor, the way I preach, how, I'm, how I pastor you, how I love you, how I treat you. I'm going to have to give an account for that. And that's all right because I give an account to God. But if I would do what I'm supposed to do, and the people in the church would do what they be obedient in what God's called us to do, people would get saved. Oh, I don't believe that, but I tell you what, if we all obey, obey God the way we want to, and you know, part of obeying God is worshiping Him. When we come into the church, we worship and we bless Him. When sinners come in here and the Spirit of God's moving, I don't care if it's 2023, 2024, or whenever it is. The Spirit of God never changes. And humanity, when they're touched by the presence of God, they're never the same. I remember the first time I got touched, the first times I got touched by God. I was, I was lost. I was undone. I was underneath the house getting away from my aunt who was speaking in tongues and screaming. That was a screaming woman I ever seen in my life. Glory. She was in there praying for my mom. My mom was a backslider. She was in there praying and speaking in tongues. And I, I ran out of the house, crawled underneath the back of the house. You know, that's when houses was higher. Doodle bug, doodle bug, and all that stuff. You know, some of you don't know nothing I'm talking about. We, we knew how to play back years ago. We didn't, we didn't have to have video games and all that stuff. We got out in the yard, we got in the woods or whatever, and we stayed out there and had fun. We'd take a tire and run down the road with it, you know. Slingshot, bow and arrow. I shot a bird with my, my slingshot, killed him. Broke my heart, I cried. Didn't stop me, though. Obedience brings blessings. If you're willing to obedience, you're going to have the things of God. And you won't have to just ask and ask and ask. If you will take, if you will be obedient to God automatically, if we love Him, if you really love Him, I'm going to tell you what His will is. His will is God has called us to, to a ministry. God's called us to be passionate about what. If you're a Sunday school teacher, be passionate about that Sunday school teacher. If you're over the senior adults, be passionate about the senior adults than y'all are. Have a drive. Hear from God. Let God direct your paths. If you're a choir director, let the Holy... And I'll tell you, sometimes it's hard being a choir director because people don't want to cooperate. When you come in, half the people can sing good out here. And we come in, oh boy, I'm, I'm, I better hush right there. I know you are, but. If you can sing, sing. If you can preach, preach. If you can teach, teach. If you can witness, witness, but do it with everything inside of you. Everything you do, do it with all your heart and with a passion. Daniel prayed three times a day because he kept obedience to the Jewish tradition. He prayed three times a day when they told him not to. The Sanhedrin court told Peter and John not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And what John said? Who am, I, who am I supposed to obey, God or man? I'm supposed to do what God told me to do. Amen. They sent them out and said, don't preach in Jesus' name anymore. You know what happened? They went where the other disciples were. 
and they prayed. And they asked God for boldness. And while they were praying, the place was shaken. The place was shaken. Somebody said, was the place really shaken, Brother, Brother Barfield? The place was shaken. The Bible says what it means. It means what it says. The place was shaken. Amen. And they went out and preached the name of Jesus. And the Sanhedrin court got upset about it. Yeah. But they couldn't do anything about it because a miracle had been performed. It was a great miracle. And thousands of people got saved. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Obedience. Yeah. What's God called us to do today? He's called us to witness. He called, he's called us to love. He said he would shed his love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You say, well, I can't do it. Well, that's what the Holy Ghost is there for. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will divinely enable you to do what God's called you to do. Amen. God's called you to sing. God's called you to sing. God's called you to obey him. <laughs> God's called you. God's called y'all. God's called everybody here. There's a calling on everybody's life. But we got to have a passion. When we do it with all of our hearts, when we do it with a passion, we don't drag in here and say, well, I'm sorry I hadn't studied today to teach y'all. Or we don't drag in here saying, well, I don't have anything to sing today. Maybe we'll come up with something. And y'all don't do that. We don't come here and say, well, I don't feel like praising God. I'm here because it's a habit. When you come to God's house, you come for one purpose only. This is not where we work for God here. This is where we worship God. This is safe haven here. We come here to magnify Him. We come here to bless one another. We come here to help one another. We come here for God. What God showed us, we can share with others. We leave here to be a witness. We leave here to be a healer. We leave here with the most powerful message there is in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Another message is the Holy Ghost is for you and your children and as many as the Lord our God shall call. The message of the gospel is a message of hope and a message of peace, a message of truth. Being obedient. Being obedient in everything. Somebody say amen. Whatever God wants you to do, do it. Say, well, I would rather do what somebody else, you know, don't worry about them. You do what you're supposed to do. Doing the will of God is uh, is something we can do with, without thinking about it because if you love him, read you the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 14. I'm a debtor. Anybody been saved in here? Yes. If you've been saved, don't see your hands. Now, if you ain't saved, don't raise your hand. I'll know who to pray for. <laughs> Everybody raised their hands. He said, I'm a debtor. You know what? If God saved you, you are a debtor to tell somebody else about it. I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. So as much as in me is, listen to what he's saying there. He said, so as much as in me is, with everything inside of me, I'm ready. I have a desire. I have a burning, consuming desire. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you there at Rome also. I have a hunger. I wish y'all could get this the way I'm trying to tell you. I want to serve Jesus. Amen. Have you ever seen people, they say to serve the Lord, but you, you can't tell it? You can't tell there's been any kind of change whatsoever? When God Almighty comes into your heart, you can't tell me there won't be some kind of change. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When the God of glory 
places his spirit inside of you. Oh, yeah. oh what a change. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, Glory something yes. got a hold of me. I remember when something got a hold of me. You remember when something got a hold of you. Don't turn loose of that thing that got a hold of you. You hold on to him with all your might. If I'm going to serve God, serve him with everything inside of me. If I'm going to preach the gospel, preach with everything inside of me. If I'm going to, if I'm going to witness I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will tell people exactly. They can't. Your testimony is the greatest thing you can give to somebody else. Praise the Lord. I don't know, I don't know what time this glue is supposed to last. I hope it lasts until after 12. It's not working too good. Every time my priest would say something, I have to bite down hard. Come on now. I can bite now. But if you bite, you devour one another. Loving God is more important than anything else. Can I hear an amen? Loving God is more important than anything else. God, can God trust you to put a burden, a couple of days ago, God put a burden in my heart. I tell you the truth, when God puts a burden in my heart and I don't know what it's about, it bothers me. Now, the first people I pray for, excuse me, I'm sorry, I love you, but I pray for my family. I pray for my children. I pray for my wife. I pray for my grandchildren. And now I'm praying for my great-grandchildren. Secondly, I start praying for you guys. Well, I don't know what's going on. I feel something. I feel an uneasiness. I feel like somebody is hurting. Somebody's going through something. A couple of days ago, on, on the way to Grovetown, I think it was Friday, I had a burden. So I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying. Because somebody's hurting. Somebody needs something. But you know what feels good? When you pray through. And that God lifts that burden. You know what he's saying? He's saying, you touch me. He's saying, you touch me, so I'm going to touch somebody else. I'm touching that. God puts a burden on us to intercede for somebody, and then God will touch them, and then he will lift the burden off of us. Let me tell you something. If you've got a burden, don't stop praying until you pray through. Don't stop praying until God touches whatever that situation is. God wants to touch them, but he wants us to ask. He wants us to seek. He wants us to knock. He wants us to pray. He'll, put a burden, he'll, put a, he'll wake up in the middle of the night and put a burden in your heart. You'll be miserable. Anybody ever felt that? Have you ever felt that? I mean, you will be miserable until you pray through. God intended for it to be that way. If you love him, you're going to be obedient to him. We need to do it with everything inside of us. And when you pray for hurting people, can God trust you with a burden for you to pray for whoever it is? I really feel like when, when God puts a burden on somebody's heart like that to pray, that God really has trust in you. Can, trust, can God trust you to put a burden in your spirit? Can God trust you if he lays a message on your heart to tell somebody you ever had anybody get mad with you when you told them what God told them, spoke to you? Wow. I've experienced that here lately. It makes me want to just be quiet, but I'm not. God's calling Samuel, but Samuel didn't know the voice of God. Eli was in disobedience, but Samuel was a child, and God could use him. He said, Samuel, Samuel. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Happened two or three times. Finally, Eli said, when you hear the voice again, say, here I am, Lord. He said, you better tell me everything he tells you. God, be it happen to you if you don't obey me. Obey the Lord and tell me everything. And God spoke to Samuel and said, Eli has disobeyed God. His two sons have been disobedient, evil, and he won't correct them.
And, and Sammy got up the next morning, and Eli said, okay, now tell me everything. He told him everything that God had told him about him and his two sons. Eli's going to die. His two sons are going to be killed. I mean, how do you tell somebody, you're going to die? And you two boys, I just say God's going to bring judgment on if you don't turn it around. But he told him everything. Eli said, that's God. But he would not change. So God allowed the enemy to steal the Ark of Covenant, to kill the two sons of Eli, to defeat the armies of Israel. And when Eli heard about it, he fell off the stool because he was fat and bald. Broke his neck, killed him. And one of the son's wife had a baby at the very same time. And she turned her head and died. And she said, name him Ichabod. The glory of the Lord has departed. This message may not be touching you. It may not be for you. But it's for me. Obedience. Obedience. Don't wait to obey God. Obey God when he speaks to you. Amen? Amen. Obey God when he tells you to do something. Obey God. Obedience to God is, is the key. God told Samuel to tell Saul, utterly destroy the Amalekites. But Saul disobeyed the Lord because he said, I fear the people. Whatever you're doing for God this morning, are you doing it with all your might? Are you doing it with everything? See, God requires me to tell you that, but he also requires me to do the same thing myself. I want to have peace with God. Have you ever been in a church service where God spoke to you to do something and you didn't do it? Hey, are y'all listening to me? Have you ever been in church service and God said, go over there and pray for somebody, and you said, what are people going to think? You probably have the key to the service. If you obey God and go over and pray for somebody, God will begin to move among the people. Amen. Obedience causes obedience. Amen. You may have the key to God moving in a church service if you obey the Lord. Stand up and lift your hands and praise God. Well, what, what will people think? Probably think, well, he's getting a blessing. Some may say, why don't he sit down? It don't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. It's what God says. Would you just lift your hands and let's pray Thank you, God. Help us, God, to be willing and obedient. Help us to obey God. Help us to obey you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to feel what it feels like when I miss the will of God. I don't want to feel like what it feels like when I've not done what God told me to do. I don't want to feel like if somebody, God told me to witness them and they die in their sins, their blood on my hands, I don't want to feel that. I don't want to experience that. And sometimes somebody's waiting on you to be a blessing to them or touch them or speak to them. Hallelujah. And God will use you. Amen. Sometimes somebody's deliverance, and you're the key to it. I don't want to feel, I don't want to ever feel like I've caused somebody to slip through my hands and miss what God has for them by me not doing what I'm supposed to do. You ever missed it? You ever missed it? This morning, if somebody would just obey God today, there's no telling 
what God will do in your life. You say, well, I've got so many needs. Maybe your needs will be met if you'll obey the Lord. He'll open up the windows of heaven. And he'll pour you out a blessing. There's not room enough for you to receive. Yeah, you, Brother Harmon, I'm not getting anything out of this. But I saw right somebody needed to hear this. Yeah. And maybe it was me. Yeah. You know how much I'm supposed to love Brother Freddie? With all my heart. I'm supposed to love without reservation. Amen. I love Brother Paul, but no, there ain't no buts about it. I love Brother Paul. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He was sick Wednesday night. I tried to call him this week. He said he tried to call me back, but my silly phone is a mess. You ever, you ever felt, you know, throw a rock and see how many times it would bounce across the river? That's what I feel like doing sometimes, that phone. <laughs> about halfway, let it go down to the bottom. Except they're real expensive. You're supposed to love one another. Amen. That's the greatest thing. Obey God. Obey God in everything that you do. Do it with all your might or don't do it at all. Don't have to do stuff. Don't have to do stuff. Do it with it. If you're going to do it for God, do it right. Do it right. Whatever God tells me to do, by His strength and His grace and His love, I promise you, if God tells me to tell you something, I will. I promise you, I'm going to preach what God wants me to preach. Would you stand with me, please? I just want to pray for you and give you a chance. Matter of fact, I tell you the truth, I think we need a general altar call this morning. If you will, come to this altar and let's pray and let's ask God. You know, we ask the question, who shall I send? Who can go for me? And Isaiah said, Lord, here I am. Here I am, God. Here I am, God. Use me. Let me touch somebody's life. Let me make a difference in their life.